This video covers strongly connected components in directed graphs. You should already understand graph basics, including depth for search, as well as both topological sorting algorithms. After introducing strongly connected components, I will try to show some intuition of where a linear time algorithm comes from and explain why it works, all with a running example. The components of an undirected graph are the different connected pieces of the graph. If there's any path from one vertex to another, they are in the same component. If the graph is connected, it has just one component. One easy way to partition the graph into its separate components is to run depth for search on the entire graph, and each time that a top-level call finds a previously undiscovered vertex, that vertex's depth for search will discover its entire component. Here, A discovers D, F, and K, K indirectly through F, and that is the first component found. Top-level searches for B and C discover their components, but D is already discovered, so its top-level search will just exit right away so that we can move on to E. When depth-first search finishes, we have some tree and back edges, and each of the trees in the depth-first search forest makes one component. If a graph is directed, how do we define components? Here, if A has a path to G, but G has no path back, are they in the same component? We say that two vertices are strongly connected if each has a path to the other, so they lie on some cycle with each other. Vertices in a directed graph are partitioned into strongly connected components. Each component is a subset of vertices that can all reach each other. Each vertex will be in exactly one component, along with the vertices that it can reach and that can reach it. Notice here, it's clear that A and D are in the same component, and so are A and F. Because of that, D and F have to be in the same component. They can each reach the other through the, their paths to and from A. If a vertex isn't in any cycle, even if it has edges in and out of it, it's all alone in its own component. Here, I is all alone. I is so very, very lonely. Our goal is to find strongly connected components from a graph, ideally with an efficient algorithm. If we don't care about efficiency, it is easy. Grab a vertex like A, see what it can reach, maybe with depth for search. Then, if you reverse the graph and search the same vertex A again, you can see what can reach it in the original graph. By superimposing one result onto the other, we can see the intersection of those two sets, the vertices that A can reach and that can reach A. That is A's strongly connected component, A, D, F, and K here. You could do the same thing for every vertex in the graph, but you only need to do it once per component, because once you know D is in A's component, you don't need to repeat that work on D. How long that algorithm takes depends on how you implement it, but it would be pretty easy to find one component in time proportional to the size of the graph. So if there are x strongly connected components, that would take runtime x times v plus e. If we want better efficiency, let's stop to really think about the strongly connected components. I'll collapse all vertices from each component into one super vertex and draw edges between super vertices if there are any edges between their corresponding sets of vertices. That new graph, the underlying component graph, must be acyclic. If it had a cycle, all vertices from the cycle's corresponding vertices in the original graph could all reach each other through some combination of intra and intercomponent edges, and they would all collapse into one component. If the original graph is acyclic, the underlying component graph looks just like the original graph. Every vertex is its own component. The two topological order algorithms discussed in previous videos each found topological orders either from the beginning or the end of the ordering. Those seemed like easier places to start. 
Is it easier to find strongly connected components if we do it by topological order for the underlying component graph? We started this video by finding components in an undirected graph with depth first search. There, we didn't need to intersect that thread with vertices from those of a second search. Well, in this directed graph, imagine if you could start a search on a vertex in the topologically last component, maybe C here. You would discover vertex C's strongly connected component in time linear to the number of vertices and edges in that component. You wouldn't need to reverse the graph, do another search, and find the intersection. You would just discover the component and be done with it. Because C's component is topologically last, the search can't escape it. So it would be nice to search it first and mark it as done. If we topologically order the underlying component graph, A's component would be second to last, just before C's component. After we've marked C's component, it would be great if we could next search something from A's component. It would discover all of its component, but it wouldn't rediscover C's component, which was already discovered when we searched C. That's a clever observation, but of course, because we don't know what the components are, we don't know how to easily grab a vertex from the last component to search it. Can we figure out some way to topologically sort the underlying component graph, even if we don't know the components? For the two topological sorting algorithms we've seen, each behaves differently if you run it on a graph with cycles. For any vertex on a cycle, or even reachable from a cycle, Kahn's algorithm will never get that vertex's in degree down to zero, so it will never make it into the ordering. You'll end up with an order that only includes the other vertices. In this graph, Kahn's algorithm returns just vertex B, that's not too helpful here. On the other hand, the depth first search based topological ordering runs depth first search and orders vertices in the reverse order that they finish. That algorithm will order all of the vertices in the graph regardless of cycles. Of course, it won't be a topological ordering because none exists in a graph with cycles. But the ordering is related to the topological ordering of the underlying component graph. So here, I've run depth first search on the graph and recorded discovery and finish times for each vertex. But I also want to consider the discovery and finish times for the underlying component super vertices. The algorithm itself doesn't have any idea what the components are, but we can just cheat and look at them for now. We can define a component's discovery time as the first time one of its vertices is discovered, and its finish time is when its last vertex is finished. Notice, within each component, those two times come from the same vertex. For A's component, A is the first node discovered and the last finished. The same goes for E, G, and of course the two single vertex components. It has to be like that. The first vertex discovered in any component cannot finish until everything it can reach, including its entire component, is finished. Vertices that are discovered later in the component will close earlier. Here, D is even able to finish before other vertices in the same component have been discovered because it only reaches the rest of the component through vertex A. So that brings us to the next clever observation. For the same reason that depth first search topological sort works, depth first search will finish underlying components in reverse topological order. From depth first search, tree, forward, and cross edges all have to finish their target vertex before their source vertex. How about back edges? they complete cycles, so they all go between two vertices from the same component. Edges between different components have to be something other than a back edge. They all finish their target vertex 
and everything it can reach, including the target vertex's entire component, before their source vertex. So that source vertex's topologically earlier component has to finish after the target's topologically later component. We still don't know what the components are, but running depth first search tells us something about their topological order anyway. Our goal was to learn enough about the underlying components, component graph's topological order to grab a vertex from the topologically last component, C's component here. But from these finish times, that still seems hard. In this example, vertex D finishes first, but its component is in the middle somewhere. The topologically last component finishes first at time 10 for vertex G. But that's hidden from us because we don't know the components and G isn't the first vertex to finish. D is. Without knowing the components, the finish times don't help us to identify a vertex from the topologically last component, which finishes first. However, it's easy to promise you that here, E's component finishes last because E finishes last. So E's component can go topologically first. Let's save vertices in the order of their reverse finish times like depth first search topological sort does. It would be nice to find and delete that entire first component and continue on similar to what we did while developing Khan's algorithm. But how do we delete it if we don't know where it starts and ends? Unlike taking a vertex in the topologically last component, if we search a vertex in the topologically first component, we might search other components too. Here, E would discover everything except B. That brings us to our last clever observation. If you reverse the graph, the strongly connected components stay the same. Any two vertices that were on a cycle are still on a cycle. The cycle just goes the other way. But the edges in the underlying component graph now go in the opposite direction. The topologically first component that couldn't be reached by any other component, now it cannot reach any other component. It is topologically last. So we can grab vertex E which we know is in the topologically last component in the reversed graph, search it, and bang, we discover its entire strongly connected component. It has no outgoing edges to other components. Conveniently, the vertex order we saved from our depth first search on the graph now lists vertices from the topologically latest components of the reversed graph first. We use that order to search for components in the reverse graph, and we don't need to delete them from the graph to continue. Depth first search will mark all vertices in E's component as explored, and then we can just continue top level searches from the other vertices using the next latest finish time from our saved vertex order. Continuing our search, we go to H next, but H is already discovered, so depth first search will ignore it, which is good because we already know its component. The next vertex we run into that we haven't already discovered is B. Its component has the second latest finish time. So it can be topologically second to last, just before E's component in the reversed underlying component graph, or second in the original underlying component graph. B doesn't have any outgoing edges in the reversed graph, but the next vertex, I, does. It has edges to both E and B's components, but we already know what those components are. We can't rediscover them. We finish the second depth first search on the reverse graph, taking vertices in the reverse order that they finished the initial depth first search in the original graph. Every time we come across a new top level vertex that hasn't been previously discovered, it will discover its strongly connected component. This last part of the algorithm looks just like discovering components in an undirected graph using depth first search. Except 
we need to do our top level searches in the specific order given from the earlier depth first search. When we finish, the top level searches that found something, E, B, I, A, and G, have no parent nodes and each discovered its component. The depth first search forest shows the components with each tree being one component. All edges from one component to another are cross edges. That isn't by chance. The only edge that can go between components in that final search is a cross edge, because in the reversed graph, each component is explored and finished before any other component has a chance to accidentally discover it by another edge. There can also be cross edges within a component but all edges between components will definitely be cross edges. Tree back and forward edges all have to go between two vertices in the same component. There don't happen to be any forward edges here. So this gives us an efficient algorithm. First, run depth first search on the graph, ordering vertices by decreasing finish time. Second, reverse the graph. Third, run depth first search on that reversed graph but use the order from step one of your top level searches. Each step takes time linear in the size of the graph, so the entire algorithm is linear. In some rough sense, the first step first search gives us a topological order for the underlying component graph, and that order is the only thing we need from that first search. The second step first search helps us discover and mark components in topological order like we saw when developing COM. It looks similar to our original inefficient way to find just one strongly connected component, but here we don't need to take any set intersections. Finally, I'll run through the entire algorithm uninterrupted for this graph. We run the first step for search, saving vertices in order of reverse finish time, and then reverse the graph. We then run depth first search on that reverse graph. Each time we get to a top level search on a vertex that hadn't yet been discovered, every vertex discovered in that search is in the same component. We can see that the root of each tree has the earliest discovery time and the latest finishing time within its component or tree. We can see the components in the order they were discovered and add edges to see the full underlying component graph. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. I've got to go break up the sniffing cycle my dogs are making with each other.